Hi, I'm The Rap Critic, and these are the top five worst lyrics I've ever heard this month. Now, with number five, I'm kind of cheating because it's technically not a lyric in the song, and other people have done this before. But in 2014, this is getting old. Honestly, for this DJ Mustard guy in particular, I don't see why he needs any trademark intros to tell you whose beats they are. Mainly because they all sound the same. Overblown synth bass and light xylophone or piano melody seem to be the only thing this guy has to offer. But then I thought, hey, he needs to put his name on the intro of his tracks, so that you know it's not just some generic boring producer making an uncreative beat, it's specifically this generic boring producer making an uncreative beat. Oh yes, friends, this is the unique trailblazing originator himself, the one and only easily reproducible sound that is DJ Mustard. You know, sometimes I wish I could go back to a time where songs were more than a synth line and finger snaps. That song came out in 2004? Huh. I didn't realize how long it's been this way. Now, I just want to make a clarification here. Because for the longest time, most people thought they were referring to girls shaking their butts when they said shake your laffy taffy. A candy that, as you may note, looks nothing like a butt. No, in fact, on the contrary, they were asking women to shake the part of them that most resembles a pink Laffy Taffy. Which would be a thing that makes sense. Since when a booty is shaking, it is presumed that the rest of the region is shaking as well. But when you specifically demand her to shake her vagina? To me, I can't help but conjure up the oddly detailed imagery of a woman's other set of lips flapping freely which is an odd request to demand of a woman, mostly because it requires said woman's nether regions to have been frequently inhabited in order to get to the point of being able to... I think we should move on. I wanna da -da -da. Okay, never mind. I, I, I can't move on. I, I mean, what the heck? Girls come in Jolly Rancho, oh, cause I stay so hard. Ooh, wait, found a new line to pick on. And you know what's funny about that line? He sounds so proud of it, as he relates it to saying that girls call him Jolly Rancher because, as he has deduced, but personally, the first thing I thought of when I heard that was, hey, uh, aren't Jolly Ranchers only an inch long? I'm just saying, Fabo, those girls might not have been giving you a compliment. Miss Jackson by Outkast is a song about apologizing to the mother of your baby mama over the fact that you and her daughter had a child before getting married and are no longer in a relationship. And in the song, Outkast talk about how they're willing to be adults about this situation, and instead of running out on these women, they still want to raise their children despite their tattered relationship and the fact that the new grandmother, Miss Jackson, does not like them. Why do I bring that up? Well, because this song has been on my mind for a while. Okay, so how does the meaning of that song relate to the meaning of this chorus? Because from what I can gather, this chorus could be summed up as Girl, you're so fine that I want to attempt raising a child whose early developmental stages will be divided between two opposing households. It strikes me as odd that he seems to have skipped the having sex part and derives pleasure purely from the possible future of single parenting. And yes, I know it's just some forgettable club jam that didn't think twice about its meaning, but if you're gonna quote my favorite rap duo, you better use it appropriately, damn it. You hear me, Mr. Cheeks? <laughs> Mr. Cheeks? Is that your rap name? Like... Facial cheeks? Like he's smiling and happy all the time? Cause that'd be a lame origin for a rap name. Or does he mean like butt cheeks? Like he's Mr. Butt Cheeks. Cause that's also kinda lame. Okay, we should make a rule right now. Anytime your rap name can be confused with either a crappy kids TV show character or the name of a gay porn star, you need to choose a new rap name. Ah yes, my girl MC Light, possibly the best female rapper of all time. But of course, even the greatest rappers in the mainstream still have to have their club slash sex jam. So here's Keep On Keep It On, which, hey, it's cool to hear a song where a girl approaches a guy for once. Well damn, what are you asking for? A romantic rendezvous or last month's rent? Seriously, there's no need to be that confrontational. I get loose and produce large amounts of juice. Oh. Oh damn. You know, due to the fact that most graphic sex raps are done through a male perspective, we only get what they focus on, which is penis size. But I never really hear about what women would brag about concerning sexual superiority, which, interestingly enough, concerns her bragging about her, let's say, 
natural lubrication. Sweet like liquor, sugar for my booger. And hey, what's wrong with a female rapper bragging about it? Can we run that back one more time? Sweet like liquor, sugar for my booger. Did she just compare her vaginal juices to boogers? I don't know about you guys, but in my personal sex life, I make it a rule not to bring up the taste of dried snot in direct comparison to cunnilingus. Okay, now I'm wondering about the conversation her and her lover had after this presumed one night stand. I just want to let you know, every time I pick my nose, I'll think of going down on you. I don't need to be reminded of that. Gas pedal, gas pedal. Oh god, not this guy again. Wait, this isn't that song. This is called Hashtag Rihanna. Because, oh hell, you know why. And I'll shoot your face off. Turn the TV on and watch Face Off. Wait, actually, I'm not sure. What did that have to do with the song again? And I'll shoot your face off. He just starts with, and I'll shoot your face off. You want to clarify what might have motivated these actions? Or maybe he got his lyrics backwards, and what he's saying is, if you turn on the TV to watch Face Off, he'll shoot you. But that's the only reasoning I can figure out, because I'm not cutting anything off here. That's how his verse starts. Just in mid-sentence. Anytime you start off a song with a conjunction, just erase it and start over. And I don't mean the song, I mean like, go back to school and just start over, because clearly the education system has failed you. But hey, it's not Sage that came up with the original idea for this song, it was actually this dude named Glasses Malone. So please, Mr. Glasses, tell us why this song is called... Treat it like Rihanna. Beat it up, beat it up, cause playing with the pussy ain't enough, I'ma treat it like Rihanna. Yep, you heard that right. But wait! Allow him to clarify. I love a freaky island bitch, and I beat, I beat till she out of it. Yep. And if you listen really closely, you can hear his voice quickly fading out at the end, cutting off the presumed, oh my god, I'm going to hell, that would surely follow something so dickish. But they still released this song. Oh, and they kept that hashtag in there. You know, so just in case the song gets popular, when Rihanna looks up her own name on Twitter, she can see their song piggybacking off of a devastating event that happened to her, used strictly as a jarringly insensitive punchline. No, it, no, no pun intended. I'm the rap critic, and I just gave these guys more publicity than they needed.